Hello and welcome back everybody to another 10 Shadow video. Today we are in the brand new FS Academy series, Navigator. FS Academy Navigator is an all new tutorial pack designed to add a new dimension to your flying, enabling you to navigate cross country using real techniques to find your way. I highly recommend before you jump into this, you look at their manual. It's jam packed with over 70 pages of good information. If you're new to flying, definitely start there. Uh, it, it has what you need to get going. All right, enough talking about it, so let's dive in. Welcome to FS Academy Navigator. Cross-country navigation is one of the most rewarding experiences in aviation, and that's exactly what we're going to cover in this series. We'll start by demonstrating how the different types of ground features we can use for navigation look from the air, then build up to more sophisticated techniques, including controlled airspace, drift corrections, and challenging conditions. It's a warm summer's day over the UK's south coast, with some haze and light clouds. Great conditions for commencing our exploration of VFR navigation. VFR standing for visual flight rules. Keep following the coast eastbound at 2,500 feet, and we'll take a look at how to select and use ground features for navigation. Navigation in its basic form is stringing together a series of landmarks that are easily visible from the air. There is a wide range of useful features that you can select as waypoints, which can be divided into three main categories. Lines, points and areas. On your left side is the coastline, which is a great example of a line feature. The line feature gives very accurate guidance in a single dimension. This is to say that when following a coast, as we are at the moment, we have a very clear indication of our lateral tracking, as it's immediately obvious if we are to the left or right side of the coast. However, following a straight line gives little information in terms of distance, unless there is a standout feature along the line such as a town, harbour, pier, or other distinctive landmark. Up ahead we see that the coastline has a sharp bend to the left, which is just the kind of easily visible and unmistakable characteristic that we look for when selecting waypoints at the planning stage. Fly along the coast until we reach the sharp bend known as Selsey Bill. Alrighty. Oh, this is new. They put, um point of interest indicators all right well we'll follow follow the coast pretending that that ginormous indicator is not there and one thing i forgot to put on was the uh, objectives that was in the manual as well put your objectives on so you can see that is new uh a new feature that they have put into their latest versions of this uh pro of these programs so Beautiful scenery, as always. Oh, wow, okay. Another surprise, um, they turned my HUD back on. I had this off by default, so. All right, so we're coming up on um, Salt Sea Bill. You should be saying something serious soon. Now please make a 180 turn to the left to follow the coast in the other direction. Okay. Pull back just a little bit so we don't uh, dive bomb. Again on our left we see the coastline. It's typically best to keep a line feature to your left side as this makes it easiest to see from your seat. 
Other aircraft following the same line should also be doing this, which gives some assurance of separation. You could follow a coastline for many hours, giving high confidence in lateral tracking, but unless your destination is also coastal, this is unlikely to be your most direct route. Continue ahead towards the disused airfield at Thorny Island, a good example of the next type of ground feature, the point feature. All right. Point features are distinct landmarks which provide a single accurate location. These are usually most useful as turning points, as they give an exact spot on the ground at which you can accurately commence the next leg of your route. They do not provide any guidance until they are in view, so distances between two point features is limited to your visual range. Disused airfields can be a useful tool, particularly in the UK, as there are many of them scattered across the landscape. Being out of service, there's also no air traffic control or airspace considerations for flying directly over them, unlike an active airfield. However, their appearance varies greatly. Some, such as Thorny Island, are readily visible, as the runways are still present and are paved, which contrasts well with their surroundings. Other examples may be difficult to pick out, they might lack the original runways and may be redeveloped for other uses, such as farming, storage or housing. Take us towards Thorny Island just up ahead. Notice how, as you get close to a feature, it becomes obscured by the aircraft's nose. That's as you true. get near, you could make a slight deviation to the right in order to keep the feature visible but being cautious not to harm the accuracy of your turn onto the next leg. It can also be useful on the approach to a point to select a spot alongside, so that you can more accurately judge when you've reached overhead. So there's Thorny Island Airfield. You can see all the runways. Overhead Thorny Island now. Please make a left turn towards Portsmouth and we'll look at the next type of waypoint, the area feature. Alright, making that left turn. I honestly don't know where Portsmouth is and I wouldn't have known if they hadn't pointed that POI, so it's good to have a map available. Up ahead we have the city of Portsmouth, situated on Port Sea Island. Portsmouth is a very historic military city, having been a huge part of the Royal Navy since 1194, and is home to about two-thirds of the Navy's surface ships. Towns and cities are typically too large to be considered as a single point, but their large dimensions do make them more visible from a distance. It is often most useful to select a point feature that is within an area feature. This could be a landmark building, major road junction, or perhaps a sports stadium. The large area feature gives visibility from a distance, and then when you get nearer, the point feature provides accuracy. Other examples of area features are industrial facilities and large lakes, each with their own benefits and limitations, which you'll experience throughout Navigator. Keep us on our way to Portsmouth and we'll pick out a point feature once we get nearer. All right, we'll stay on the heading towards Portsmouth. And like I was saying, saying uh, you need to uh, print out that map or have it on an extra screen next to you so you can uh, use it to help. As we get nearer to the city, we can pick out a local landmark, the Spinnaker Tower. Designed to represent the Spinnaker sail of a ship, the Spinnaker Tower is a tall, distinctive building that is prominently visible beside the water. This makes it a natural choice for a visual reporting point, VRP. 
VRPs are officially recognized and shown on VFR maps, chosen for their easy recognition. Take us over the Spinnaker VRP. All right, there's the Spinnaker Tower. We'll head over there now. Notice how densely populated Portsmouth is, with rows and rows of terraced streets. Choosing a particular street would be challenging, even for those familiar with the area, making them unlikely choices for a point feature. Please make a turn to the right to head north. We'll now look at crossing a line feature rather than following along its length. As line features are single dimension, as we discussed earlier, if we plan to cross over the line, we get little to no lateral guidance as we approach. But we do now get very accurate distance information, as we know the exact moment that we cross the line, in this case the M27 motorway. This can be very useful for checking timings, to see if the flight is progressing at the expected speed, Major discrepancies can indicate a change in the wind. Fly north until we reach the M27 motorway. Okay, should be there in just a minute. There it is. We are crossing directly overhead to the M27 from a 90 degree angle. Using line features in this way can help when lost as you can head towards the line knowing that you will eventually meet it from which point you can work out where along the line you are. Now turn left to follow the M27 westbound keeping it on your left. All right here we go. A slight descending turn so I can get back down to 2,500 feet. Level the wings here and we can see the motorway stretching off into the distance, which would be an easy line feature to follow. And there it is. Now we've had a look at the various types of features that can be chosen as reliable waypoints. Throughout Navigator, we'll introduce concepts such as wind drift and the navlog, plus explore some of the varied landscapes that you will come across, such as mountain valleys, snow-covered countryside, and a dark night in the desert. Next, we'll look at stringing a series of waypoints together to form a basic route. All right, folks, that'll do it for lesson one. Um, I really liked it. it. I like the new features. Now, I don't think you can turn off the POIs because I actually had them off in my menu. And when I jumped into this, it, it popped in. So the HUD and the POI, I guess, get reset when you do this mission. So 
not a big deal. I mean, it does help. It is very helpful, especially if you don't know where you're going. But anyways, that was lesson one. I really liked it. I can't wait to explore the rest of this series with you. So if you like this, please click the like button and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.